Our next entry in the pathogen parade is Salmonella enterica. So what are its properties? Salmonella enterica causes about 1.35 million infections per year. It is just like E. coli, a gram negative rod that grows at 37 degrees centigrade in an optimal temperature and is a facultative anaerobe. However, it is both lactose and indole negative, and that makes it distinct from E. coli, and it's one of the tests you can do to distinguish it. Its transmission route is also fecal to oral, and you get it by eating contaminated food or water or contact with contaminated animals, such as chickens or turtles. So let's look at the disease course. The incubation period is 12 to 96 hours and it will cause non-bloody diarrhea. There is not as much bloating or gas as in Clostridium difficile infections and you will get abdominal cramps. So that's similar to E. coli, but without the bloody diarrhea. There's a fever and it normally resolves in one to seven days. Let's look at the pathogenesis. It has several different proteins and features that make it a good pathogen. And I'm going to talk about just a few of them. One is it has a type one fimbriae that makes it easy to adhere to the small intestines. Again, it's one of these pathogens that sticks to the small intestine and re reasonably tightly. It then has this type three secretion system that injects proteins into the host. These proteins, weaken the host cells and allow invasion of the salmonella into host cells and pass the epithelial barrier. The capsule also inhibits complement binding and it protects it from complement, which is again part of your immune system. And it has an enterotoxin that can cause diarrhea. Right? Finally, its cell wall has lipopolysaccharide in it in the outer membrane. When this is released, it, has, it is an endotoxin and causes a strong immune response. These things all combine to make you feel pretty miserable, but after you know two to seven days, uh, your body will get control of this and then you'll feel better. Diagnosis and treatment of Salmonella enterica. Diagnosis is by culturing stool Rapid tests are available, but they are always confirmed by culturing. Treatment in cases that remain in the gastro tract is supportive care only, and it's been found that antibiotics do not help with recovery, so they're unnecessary. In the 5% of cases where disease escapes the gut and becomes systemic, then antibiotics are worth doing. Fluoroquinolones, ceftriaxone, and or, S or azithromycin are the most common antibiotics used, which one depends upon the resistances or the resistance profile of the specific Salmonella enterica strain. All right, that's it for Salmonella.